it all starts with knowing what you're not doing for the environment and that you can change. I have a junkyard and I'm an environmentalist. That's an oxymoron, I think that's what they call it. Years ago, it was called Freeport Auto Wrecking Company. And I was probably the only generation in that yard that really made the physical changes. I had a five-year plan, a 10-year plan, a 15-year plan, and I'm gonna guess somewhere around 30 years has passed, and I'm still at the junkyard. So I took it from a dinosaur of the past into computers, technology, efficiency, right to the point where in the last eight years, also environmentally friendly. Simple practices, my mother used to say, you want to sleep in your bed, you make your bed. It started off with just sweeping up where you were working. If you dropped something, you picked it up. And that was a start. Then we looked at things like water recharge. The most important thing for me to do at that point was to cover the wrecking area. I was conscious of where does everything go. You drop one drop on the ground and you get rain, you got two gallons of water contaminated with one drop. Take that and make it a quart and then you got hundreds and hundreds of gallons. Where does it go? It runs off. Magic! Put a roof over it. Everybody thought I was doing it for my help. They thought I was the greatest guy in the world. We don't have to work out in the rain and the mud and the snow and all of that stuff anymore. Under a roof, I wasn't doing it for you. I was doing it so I didn't pollute everything. I mean, if I was doing it for you, you'd have heat. Until I moved away for a few years, I really didn't appreciate that internal need I had to be close to the ocean and close to the bays. What really hooked me big time were our marshlands. They are the easiest thing in the world to take for granted. Our Freeport waters are a very, very complex marshland system made up of many channels, deep and shallow. The wetlands have deteriorated to a point we could have never imagined. Simply because it has one of the last sewage treatment plants, not outfall driven, actually emptying directly into the bays. Seaweed is reacting, seaweed is all over the place. We're talking about areas where there's a sting in the air in the summer, down at Point Lookout in Lido Beach, where it's washing up, where it is rotting in the air, and it's actually toxic. It's been threatened for a real long time with environmental issues, but also simple issues, which is where Splash started, the visuals. People are not scientists. They don't know what's in the mud. They don't know why they can't eat something. They don't know why the fish are dying. But they can identify with garbage. A Poland spring bottle, a piece of styrofoam, a rubber ball, a plastic cigarette lighter. If you're willing to recognize those things, educate yourself a little bit. Talk about environmental science. I mean, everybody could start at such a low level. It's unbelievable. Splash has gotten me so intrigued with the fact that maybe one person can make a difference that I actually feel that if you really are passionate enough about something, it doesn't have to be a scientist that can find a solution. Sometimes the solutions are very obvious. We make them more complicated than we need to. So it goes back to just Jim's solution. If one guy can clean up a junkyard, why can't all of us collectively clean up our base? My name is Jim Ruacco, and I'm a junk man.